Hello everybody. I want to create a game and I want to create a simple game so that um, beginners uh, in C++ could quite easily understand almost everything what we are doing. And uh, of course we can make it more complex later on, but let's have the version number one. So it's going to be quite easy to do. And I, I've already done this actually. So we're going to go it step by step. Um, from the beginning. I can show now the final product. So just uh, just kind of a teaser. <laughs> teaser. So this will be the final product. So we have this menu, new game, exit and stuff. And we have score as well. It's going to be very, very simple idea, but there are a couple of nice things here what we can implement. So I press N to start the game. So it's kind of, we are in a space, kind of space, and I'm trying to avoid those, uh, I call them chunk like a space, yeah, yeah, no, so now I hit, you see the XXX, so I hit that chunk, so I got score 19 points, and so each, each chunk, when it when it passes the bottom, uh, you get one point at the moment, of course we can change all this logic later on, and actually my plan is here that we're gonna, we're gonna have a, you know, maybe a long project after that, we're gonna slowly improve this game, and I can even listen your your advices that what should this game do so we can have a live stream maybe who knows let's see where it goes but i have some interesting ideas about this we can start improving maybe together how about that so let me play it again new okay here we go yes 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 let me try to get 100 points now yeah just a simple idea so we try to you know avoid those uh, those uh, those things which are coming this is kind of like a space i made it blue but we can make it black if, if you guys if you guys like black more so like this so and we can change the speed and how many those chunks are coming and we can create new chunks new kind of things we can add many and there we go so i i got 133 points game over so this is the target okay so let's start cracking and I will show now step by step from the from the very very simple start how can we create a proper almost like a professional uh, level structure uh, code because that's a difficulty many times with uh, beginners isn't it that that you have an idea and you have a chunk of code but how do you make a nice structure you know that it, it looks pretty good and it's easy to continue developing from there so i'm trying to help here if possible and okay the starting point for this uh, game is actually because i i created a console console drawing video uh, some years ago and the name of that video is this one you can go back i think it was 2016 when i created this video c plus plus console game programming one well, <laughs> where is the number two? But anyway, I think this is the number two. And ASCII text drawing. So this is what it is all about. It's ASCII text drawing. We are not doing any OpenGL stuff. We are focusing on the C++ part and learning classes and things like that. So you can go and look at that video if you want. Uh, details about this um, uh, this code. I copied this code basically almost 100%, 100 it's from there. So this is the starting point. And so if I compile this one now, and we can look at it. So this is how it looked 2016. So four years ago when I made this, uh, I was able to move this character like this. And this is where we finished that time. But now we can use this one as a base for this game, right? So let's quickly look at this code first before we start it's a very short code here but let's quickly look at this and what is it doing this first function is setting the cursor position of that console window so we have we have we can use this windows uh, function called set console cursor position so we will get the handle of the we will get first the handle of the console window like this get standard handle uh, standard output handle this is the way to get the handle to that console window and then we need to pass that handle to this function and um, then here we can we can then tell tell that at which at which which position we want to place that cursor 
you know when it, uh, it starts blinking so we can move that cursor and here is the way to uh, set the coordinate uh, we we create this coordinate struct and then just x y there and we will pass it to this function so it's that simple this is how we change where the cursor is and where we're gonna throw next okay so like if i run this game okay so the cursor is now somewhere i don't know maybe 10 i think it's 10 10 maybe 10 10 here so it's then then and now if you if we are saying C out now it will draw it here and if, if we say like 50 uh, 3 it will go here and here somewhere here and if we say C out now it will draw starting from there so that's how it works okay and the next video is is virtual key pressed so this function we will use because we we are pressing the arrows up up left down and right arrows so this function here get async key state if it's not if it's not zero for the test key like let's say we are we are using the virtual key left if we are calling this function with virtual key left and we put it there if this is not zero uh, that means that it was pressed so if this function returns non-zero value it means that this test key this key uh, from the keyboard is pressed I think it only deals with the virtual keys if I remember correctly but anyway we only need these four keys so it doesn't matter hi and escape as well so it understands the escape it understands these virtual keys like escape key as well okay so that's how we're checking it so now let's let's look at from the from the top uh, just shortly this function so um starting from here so um yeah here i'm here i'm setting the so that the cursor is not blinking this is the way to change the cursor uh, because we don't want the cursor to be blinking um because if i don't do this let's run it now okay so you see that there is the the cursor <laughs> the cursor is there it's not blinking but it's still there we don't we don't want that cursor there so this is the way to get rid of that cursor that um we first again we will ask the handle of the output window like this and then we will set up um, set this is some kind of struct this one we will set the size size what is this size i think that's the size of the is that the size of the cursor i think it is but it doesn't matter the size doesn't matter here because we are we're gonna make it invisible and so we set the invisible flag to sorry we set the visible flag to false and then we will pass it there and that will change change so that the cursor is not there and then we are running the loop uh, forever we are checking that is the left key pressed if the left left key is pressed we are moving the x we are decreasing the x value which is the uh, like like the it's the horizontal uh, position of the of the player so we will reduce it by one and if we are going right increase it by one and then <coughs> then the vertical the same thing if we're going up if we are going up we will need to decrease it yeah so yeah because uh, we're going up uh, it dec decreases and if we are going down we need to increase that and then if we want to stop the game loop we just press escape and it will break the loop and um, this is the one i i don't know why we, we are needed because if i don't do this if i remove that and um, i'm waiting here five milliseconds between each draw because if i you see there's nothing so i don't know why that happens actually but um I already mentioned this 2016 that we need to wait 
six milliseconds and um, anyway I'm not too much worrying about it I don't know why we need to wait here five milliseconds we need to give some some break so to speak here we're waiting five milliseconds between each drawing and then I'm um, this lock window will lock lock the drawing so that if we so it it will only draw here it will lock the drawing and it will draw everything at this point so that uh, that um, that causes that there is no flickering because if we don't do this uh, it will constantly draw if we have many drawings here we are drawing many things here like this it will draw 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 so there's going to be flickering happening easily so we only draw once uh, uh, sorry we only update uh, the window once so this causes uh, that there's no flickering and this one clears the screen so we first clear all the screen then we will s set the position of the cursor and then we will draw in this case I'm drawing three stars and then this one causes that the console window will draw whatever everything what we did here on one go so that's good okay so this is the starting point and um, now let's start uh, slowly creating the game let's make the first version and uh, okay if we look at that code and we we want to make that that we want to have this kind of thing uh, we want to have this kind of product so what do we need to first do what should we do first here to make it to have a better structure first of all in this uh, whole program in the code okay so we have we have two objects here we have these we have these well, i call them chunk like a uh, space chunk and then we have the player and they are all moving so um we need to start thinking about the structure first thing i'm i'm thinking here is that we need to separate the drawing totally from the logic of the game so that's very important that we don't have this thing we don't have this drawing thing uh, and then moving moving the object everything in the same block so we want to separate the drawing stuff okay so let's create the render 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 class in order to do that so I go here at class and I will call it I will call it a render renderer I'll call it renderer renderer and um, space place it there that's a good start all right so I call this um, game by the way by the way space slalom we are like doing the slalom slalom we are we are we are trying to not to hit those things and okay so I'm gonna now remove this straight away from the project sorry actually what I'm gonna do I'm gonna make a copy of this um, and uh, so we can start changing that code straight away so I'm gonna go here I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna make a copy of that file okay and I will call it version version um, the starting starting point let's call it version zero okay and what if I just add that zero here so at that zero where is it here just to be able to quickly quickly you know copy stuff from here to here so this will be our new version so I'm gonna remove that now from the compilation so project all configuration and I'm gonna say here yes exclude from the build so it's not gonna build this file so we're gonna continue from here but we have the old code if we need to copy paste you know so so there's the renderer so let's start now uh, thinking about it's always good to create the basic basic building blocks what we're gonna need here so that we can then easily build on that the small building block building blocks so 
so if we have this kind of game what is the first thing we need to have here well I will say that we need the point we need to have a point that because we need to have we have we're gonna have these coordinates x y like 500 not 550 <laughs> 10 and so on so we're gonna have x x and y point so why don't we just create a point first it's gonna create a simple struct like a point and that's gonna have x and y coordinates in x in y okay so this one defines a point defines a point or coordinate coordinate on that window what else we need gonna need well we're gonna need the rectangle why is that because uh, at some point we need to check that if the, if this chunk hits this hits this um, player and it's kind of rectangle it's a it's a very tiny rectangle but it is rectangle and we are checking rectangle hit here kind of and the other thing is that we need the rectangle to tell the size of the playing area like if I play this now like if I press N you see I'm going to the right and I'm stopping here right and I'm going bottom so it's gonna gonna have the rectangle the playing rectangle left top bottom right so we're gonna need that rectangle in couple of places here so why don't we just uh, immediately have that correct structure so that's gonna be called rect, uh, rect let's call it rect rect like rectangle and it's gonna have have that there so I'm gonna copy paste it so it's gonna have left top right bottom values that defines a rectangle okay dokie so now now how about the initialization stuff we need to initialize the renderer when we start the game we need to initialize the renderer somehow and let's look at the code what we have here this is the original code the first version so we see that when we start even before we start the game loop we can see that we need to do all of this right and this is only done done once at the beginning of the game and never done after that kind of so I will suggest that we will create a global initialization function simply like that which we will call at the beginning okay so let's do that so we can call this one as we can we can do this one there before we even start the game really initializing the console window okay and the rule of thumb normally is that we prefer to have global function instead of putting stuff inside the class so that's why the first version I'm gonna just create a global function just here it's not the member of the class it's gonna be it's gonna put the public the public there so anyway so let's go and um, do that a uh, function initialize renderer and so we're gonna go here and uh, put that function there okay okay so now um, if I go back here where was where was it so I think we need to copy this code now from here uh, by the way before we go there um, this this changes the color this uh, this is the background color and this is the the text color um, and we can soon test that so I'm gonna copy it we didn't test it yet but I'm gonna copy it straight away now we can we can look at that soon so we need all of this code here to do the initial initialization and now it's complaining about the it can't find the handles and stuff so we need to copy most of this uh, you know the, the includes here 
I'll just copy all of them. We can start removing the unnecessary ones as we go. Okay, and what else we need here? At the moment, this is exactly now what we did what we did in the first version, so let's just leave it as it is. Okay. And um, now next question here is that how we're gonna do the rendering now? Let's look at this first version again. Okay, so what do we need to do here? Let's look at the this is the this is the game loop here. And let's look at the rendering section here. So the rendering section rendering section starts from here in my opinion. This is this belongs to the rendering uh, in, in my opinion because because we need that we need that break for the renderer. Okay, so this is the first line for the renderer. And then this is the second second line for the renderer. The renderer needs to lock lock the drawing. And this is also belonging to the renderer. And then we have a logic. This is all about logic. This is uh, setting the position of the player. That's not drawing. This is logic. And this is setting the, uh, you know, um, well, that's kind of okay. So okay, sorry. This is drawing actually. I think. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, this is drawing because we are drawing the player, isn't it? But this is not drawing. This is setting the position of the player. This is logic. And here we are drawing. And here we are drawing again. So, in this section, everything else except this, except this one, is drawing at the moment. And we can see that before we do the logic, we need to do the initialization. We need on each round we need to do this drawing initialization first. And we always have to remember at the end, unlock, unlock the drawing. Because if we forget to do this, this, we are probably in troubles. We always need to do this in pairs. First this one, and then we need to remember to do this one. There is a there is technique in C++ how we can how we can make sure that we always um, clean clean up things. We start something and then we do the cleanup, and that's called a right technique. It's called if you want, you can Google about it. RAI. It's called resource uh, accusation is initialization, <laughs> um, something like that. What it means is that when you create the object in the constructor, you will initialize something. The constructor, like object, object constructor. The constructor of the object, or something like this. And in this case, we would initialize this stuff. And in the dis uh, destructor, when you destroy that object, um, destructor is actually this one. So, in the destructor destructor function, we will do the cleanup or something what we need to always do at the end. And in this case, we always need to do this one at the end. So this code belongs to the destructor. Destructor. This code belongs to the constructor, and this one to the destructor. So the so this object automatically then always does this one, which is good for us, I think, in this case. So that's why what I'm gonna do in the renderer is that I'm gonna do the initialization of the of the drawing always in the constructor and I'm gonna do this cleanup in the destructor destructor okay so let's go and do that this code needs to go to the constructor so let's create the constructor constructor function put it here I, put it at I, I normally put the constructor and destructor at the at the beginning of the file because I think it belongs at the top because it's easy to always find it from there. It's the first thing the object does. Kind of good to be there. Okay, and now let's go and copy that code. So this needs to be done when we create uh, the renderer. 
the temporary renderer object okay we are sleeping a little bit and then we will lock the window and we will clear the window and then we can start the drawing and when we finished in the destructor we will do the cleanup or something what we always need to do at the end and um, let's put that in the header file that that name of the function okay and now we go here so at the moment we only need to do this unlocking unlocking of the drawing of the console drawing which will cause that the console will draw itself actually okay that's a good start okie dokie and so and then and then we need some kind of function here finally which will do the drawing uh, let's go and look at this code now so we need to have some kind of function which will do the drawing and what does the drawing need well the drawing needs a position where to draw position where we're gonna draw where are we drawing and then the second thing what the drawing needs is that what to draw in this case we are passing the string what we want to draw because we are only drawing characters here in this in this um, project so we will we can simply pass the string so this will be the string it could be anything like london you know we can draw anything so if we just pass the string and where we want to draw that string that's all we need so let's go and create the draw function now and the way the function will look is like this we will pass uh, the string we want to draw by const reference and then we will pass here that where we want to draw that thing and see the const and reference um, that's the way to pass things if you are only reading things and let's go now and um, implement it renderer and um, there it goes okay so let's go and look at how did we draw here we well here we just we set the position using this function set cursor position which was this function as, as, as we remember so now this function probably needs to go to the renderer because the renderer is gonna set the position right we are changing where this happens so the renderer is gonna do that now the setting the position so I'm gonna paste it here and um, it can just be a global function as I said earlier we prefer global functions we don't want to put anything inside here if it's not really needed we want to keep this class as small as possible so th there is no reason this function to be a member of this class so the rule of thumb says that we will leave it as a global okay there is nothing here which says that this needs to be a member of this class it doesn't need to be there okay so we can leave it there outside and now the draw function needs to call that and it's gonna be quite simple we're just gonna take the position from here the position is passed via that variable so it's just gonna say position x position y And then the second thing we the second thing we had to do in a drawing is is doing the C out just to see out. Okay, so let's go go and do the C out. STD C out. And what are we gonna see out? Well we're gonna we're gonna pass that text what we're gonna see out, so we just put the text there. Okay, it's that simple in this case at the moment it's that simple okay 
good, good, good. So let's see now how how much this looks simple after all of this, because we can start removing stuff from here, right? Because many most of this stuff is actually now in the renderer, isn't it? We moved it there. So let's look now how much we can remove from here. We can remove all of no, we we can't remove this one because this is this has nothing to do with the rendering. So that's why we keep this here. But this one we can remove that. And then this was the initialization section. We can remove all of that. And then the game loop starts. This is lo this is logic. And this is something we can look at that later on if we want. And this is this is done in the renderer, all of this. And now, now we need to do the drawing. Um, I'll put it in the comments because we need to do the drawing, drawing call here. We, and but we don't need to do this one at all. I will actually I will remove all of this extra stuff now to keep it as simple as possible. I can copy it from the other from the other file if we need this keep it as simple as possible isn't it so so <laughs> you see it's quite small already and so let's uh, think about this now uh, so now we need to now we need to call call that and I'm looking my code here okay so let's look at this uh, let's change it change it a little bit more now Normally in the main function in C++ we want to do as little as possible. That's the rule of them also. We don't want to start doing the code here. So let's create a function, another function which is global function. Let's call it void run game. So we're gonna do the all the things, almost all the things actually here. So I'm just gonna copy copy sorry, cut this section and put it there. And we're gonna call it from here from main how about this but one thing is missing so what is missing well a couple of things missing the initialization is missing um, as we remember we did the initialization function this one initialize renderer which is a global function which we can get from here from the h file so we need to call this function first before we do anything initializing the global values of the console window and um, so let's include first of all this renderer class which is which we just created okay so that we can start using this class and also that global function so we need to call this one first I will yeah that's a, that's an interesting question actually I think this is the best place to do it at the beginning of this run game because yeah because this game is running so we don't need to do we could do it also here by the way we could call that but we are kind of we are splitting the hairs <laughs> so to speak <laughs> um, but as I said earlier the rule of thumb is that we want to do almost everything outside the main so I think I need to follow my own rules right so there's the place to do that right I think that's a good place yes so we are only calling the run in the main, and and now this this code is missing. Now we need to now we need to now um, we need to now do the rendering. Well, the logic here is that we will create always the renderer here. Renderer. Each time when we are drawing, we will call we will create a new renderer object. And then we're gonna do the rendering, whatever we need to do. So using that function, there is a function called draw which we just created. And in a draw, we will pass. What do we want to draw? Let's draw hello. And then the position where we want to draw it. Well, it's x and y. So let's put here uh, for the first version. Let me just put some random 30, 15 coordinate. Okay, we are drawing hello, and uh, yeah, let's start with this one. Let's just see first that it, it runs, and 
as we remember this renderer automatically calls the cleanup at the end one more time if we go here it will do the uh, the drawing in a destructor which happens here because this renderer will be destroyed here so it will call that destruction function on a line 47 which will cause that lock window update null will be called so let's compile it should throw that hello at the position 30 15 and no movement there it is voila so there is the hello and um, now let's start moving let's make it the same as the original code was so in the original code we had that we had that x y which we keep increasing so let's put that x y x y x y um oh it's already there sorry and then we need to just we need to pass that x y always here okay let's let's put the uh, first values here let's put here for example um 20 let's start from 20 15 and then we need to increase we need to increase oh this one increases it automatically right so it should be all good okay it should actually already move so let's compile if i go here and i press yeah there it goes okay let's make a ball or something which falls from the top to the bottom and um, just a quick exercise here so so let's call it let's call it ball int uh, ball x ball x and ball y and um, it starts let, let's start something from let's say 30 at the top so it's gonna be zero or something we can just put zero zero is at at the very top and then let's draw that so now we can see that it's quite easy to draw it because we can use the same renderer we can say draw and here we can say what we're gonna draw let's let the star be the ball and then we just need to put that point there x y this is the x of the point and y of the point and you can just use the new method you can just put the brackets uh, the compiler knows that you are you mean point you can also put the point like this but the c++ compiler knows that you are putting point here so this is not needed necessarily just one trick here for free <laughs> okay and there's the ball ball x and ball y and now we need to now we need to keep we need to keep keep increasing this y yeah so i'm gonna increase that y by one on each round and when it hits the bottom uh, we need to put it back to the top i guess so if it goes to the bottom so if the y is greater than let's say 22 then we will make it back to the top we will move it back to the top back to the zero and then it will fall again okay let's run it there it goes the ball is dropping isn't it <laughs> you see it's falling okay so here is a here's a good start for the game so we we successfully moved all the rendering outside from logic and this this is a good place to now continue next time and we're gonna have a good good code coming so in the next video we will then create the chunk like like here we'll create those the chunk which will start fo uh, start falling randomly from the top and random si random length as well and then at some point we will create the hit test 
so we can see that it hits the junk. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.